Hey there, Shiro listeners, Saturn Dave here, reminding you that you must play Sega Saturn, and that it's contributions from listeners like you that help keep this and our other shows hosted and available on demand. In addition to our website, SegaSaturnShiro.com, where you can find all of the most up-to-date news and information from around the Sega Saturn scene. If you'd like to show your support and gain access to several perks, visit Patreon.com slash Shiro Media Group to become a Patreon supporter. If a monthly donation isn't possible, no worries. We still value your support in liking and sharing our content on social media and joining our Discord community to become a part of the Saturn conversation. Thank you for being a loyal listener and a part of this great community. And as always, Well, first, thank you all for coming to this panel. Yeah. Thank you for coming thank to you the very PRG. much. We're excited to see all of you guys. And uh, yeah, we're Sega Saturn Shiro. I'm Saturn Day. Who do we got here? Uh, I'm Trey Noko or Patrick. I'm Nick, sometimes called Pandemonium. Good got, to see got you all. Panda right there. We are we're huge Sega Saturn fans. If you guys didn't guess, and uh, yeah, we just we create content and about Sega Saturn and try to help folks get into the console. I'm trying to, uh, I'm not gonna mess with that anyway. Thanks for coming out. Today, we're actually talking about you guys, in a way. We're actually talking about the community. This whole this whole presentation is really just about fans, just like you, who love this console and have decided to get into creating stuff for it, basically. Be it fan translations or homebrew, uh, original homebrew games. Right. And so really, this is, this is a celebration of the community because that's what makes the Saturn so great. And it's really just heating it up and it's like a snowball effect. So we are gonna get right into it talking about all the amazing fan translations that you guys can experience on the Saturn. And there's quite a lot of them for sure. It's like really a blown up in recent years. We've seen kind of a renaissance in the past three years alone for Saturn yeah. Homebrew. Am I too low? Oh, okay, well, so the story goes, you know, Saturn's 30 years on now almost, right? And everybody's used to hearing about how the Western library is kind of paltry, not that great. There's this amazing Japanese library on the Saturn, right? But a lot of it is kind of trapped behind, or has been trapped behind a language barrier, kind of a a steep uh, barrier to entry. But that's not the case anymore because the fans have kind of taken it into their hands, uh, into uh, the fans have kind of taken it upon themselves to bring us a bunch of fan translations. We're gonna go right ahead and show you. So starting in about the early 2000s, 2001 to be specific, and I have a... Uh, this was one of the first uh, translation patches ever made for the Saturn, and it's, it's been a while. Uh, it's been some a long time. time. So like back in the early 2000s, it was, it was actually slim pickings. Like there wasn't a lot of translations going on for the Saturn. Maybe it was like the difficulty figuring out how to patch or program for the Saturn. Mm-hmm. But essentially Dreamcast, had a ton of homebrew translations, a bunch of other consoles, you know, just enjoyed a ton of translations, but Saturn kind of took a while to catch up, and all we had in those early years was stuff like this, Ninpen Manmaru from Simon Fang, Alex Kidd, and Cafe Alpha. Cafe Alpha has been an established uh, individual in the Saturn scene who's still working on stuff like the Pseudo Saturn Kai projects and stuff like that, so that's, this was kind of like one of the first. Okay. Cute little platformer. You could play it and you know fight through the Japanese text if you can't read it, but now you can read it. So they yeah. patched it. So that's great. So if it's you were to pick up, let's play too, especially Absolutely. with friends yelling at you to, oh, you gotta move, don't go on the edge. Right. Yeah, the edge. Yeah. You got, um, of course, the Shining Force series. We only got the first game localized in the West, and of course, the story was kind of ham-fisted to try to work as one scenario, but we didn't get the whole story. So. The Shining Force translation team, they took it upon themselves and re- released the first iteration in January of 04, all the way back in 04, and it's been receiving updates since then. What do you guys think of this? I really like this, this, game, this series a lot. I never really played much Shining Force back in the day, but when I played this, I really enjoyed it. I think Knight and his team and the people who worked with Knight of Dragon did a lot of great work on the series, and I think the best part about that is that he did, they did not only the second and third scenarios, but they redid the first one as well, so it's more of a right. a like continuous project. It's more uh, There's more continuity that's a lot better right, with that. Yeah. You start from the beginning, so definitely recommend, yeah. if you want to get into the series, definitely check out the transla- fan translations of all three scenarios. And unique to this project, I feel, is the fact that it's still going today. Like, they continue to iterate and continue to find better ways to uh, optimize and enhance this translation. It's on, like, version 11 now or something. But essentially, you can go download the latest patch today and play through this amazing Japanese RPG, uh, strategy RPG, 
It's just, it's absolutely amazing. One of the best games for Saturn. Who wants to take this one? Dragon Force 2 by Verve Fanworks in January of 2016. 16, yeah. So we jumped from 2004 gap. all the way up yeah. to 2016. So the first Dragon Force game did come out in the West. Uh, that was officially localized for, uh, for us English-speaking folks. Um, but we never got the sequel. Um, and uh, now we got it. <laughs> so in got it, guys. We did it. patched it. And this was kind of when the translation uh, scene really started to, to really take off for real. Because we had that gap between Shining Force getting patched in 2004 and this coming out in 2016. Yeah. And it's a really good show of force. You can see all the... There's a, a ton of sprites being loaded into the Saturn right now. You can have armies of hundreds fighting each other. It's a very fun game to play and really, really fun to watch and spectate to. I want to emphasize that if there are any games that you see here on the screen today that you want to test out, we will have a booth in the, in the vendor hall where yeah, we'll, be demo we'll be demoing all the translations and we'll be demoing all the homebrew for you guys to test out. Come by, ask us any questions you want. It's a lot of fun to get into all of these games, especially if you slept on them back in the 90s. Oh my. Of course, um, in, uh, in November of 2016, we got the ball rolling here. Junker HQ released their translation of Police Knots. Man, Police Knots. I mean, I, I kind of like the game a little bit. Just yeah, a, he might like just it. Just a tiny little bit of liking the game a little bit, yeah. you know? Maybe a little bit, but I love this game. For those who don't know, the, uh, the amazing Hideo Kojima. Worked on this. Uh, it's a, I guess, a spiritual successor in a way to Snatcher. Uh, basically, you play as Jonathan Ingram, and your wife gets murdered by uh, space cyborgs or something like that. And basically, you have to sort of uh, solve right the mystery. There. Yeah, the wife's fine. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. She's she's fine. Yeah, just, just don't, just don't like, just pause right now. Nothing happens after that. But yeah, anyways, the thing is that it's a lot, really fun game. Uh, it's a text-based adventure. A lot of shooting things. It supports the light gun as well, and the light gun and shuttle mouse. So whatever flavor you want it, controller, mouse, shuttle mouse. So it's controller, mouse, or the gun. You can do it, and it's a lot of fun. Really I good visual it. novel with light gun gameplay in it every now and then. It's it's a ton of fun. Would you agree that the Saturn is like the definitive way? Yeah, the definitive. I'm biased, but yeah. 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 <laughs> Definitely try it out. Hideo Kojima. It's a timeless classic, I think. All right, what do we got next? We got Link Liver Story. Now, this is the game that really kicked off the avalanche of translations that we've seen. The Renaissance kind of started here, more or less. Yeah, yeah like, so we, we had... We one had one after the other. The, we had a trickle, but now it's a steady flow of translations that mm -hmm. are coming, uh, multiple per year. Uh, starting in January of 2019, right around before the pandemic, you had Link Liver Story, translated by the Stardust Crusaders, Aisha and Paul Met. Um, Paul Met of uh, Medusa Team. And I mean, they just did an amazing job translating this uh, this really fun kind of. It, it's it's got like very a comedic RPG. dialogue. Yeah, it's it definitely plays like a, a link to the past, kind of like Magic Knight Rare, so to speak. Um, a good marriage of 3D and 2D. We have that 3D overworld map that they put in the game, um, and some 3D elements even here on this little boss fight. The dialogue's really funny. All the characters are hilarious, and the people who translated this into English did a very good job at retaining kind of the characters of each of the characters that are in the game and how they are. Um, very fun. I would highly recommend trying this one out if you're into, you know, action RPGs. And they gave us a complete English manual as well. So you yeah, know, you they can did, download which is that. Great. Weird name, but fun game. Weird Act name, Linkle River. Highly Rivers. recommend, highly yeah. recommend. And the music is great, too. Next up, we've got, of course, this is a game that I literally refused to play until it was translated on the Saturn. Like, I had years to play this, but I waited, and I said, one day, I'm going to play Grandia on, this, on my Saturn, and Trekkies Unite... 118 brought it to us in uh, December of 2020. So uh, he, there were beta builds going around to the community before that, but 2020 was really the street date. And uh, this is this is Grandia. This is the definitive version of the Grandia, Saturn version. In my opinion. Is, yes, it's safe to say that's from from a graphic than the PlayStation standpoint. I mean, John sure. Linneman from DF Retro, he agree, he agrees with us. He's like, yep. this is the way you got to play the game, uh, just because of what VDP2 is doing, you know, and. This patch went gold sometime last year, if I remember correct, so everything yeah. should be good to go. There's no more typos here and there. It's it's all good. good it and the best thing about that, though, is that if you don't like the dub dialogue, guess what? There's no dub in it, so you get the subbed version of it. So you do, you if you didn't like the PlayStation language. one, you're, you're yeah. good to go. It's cute. It's fun. The 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 combat is great. I'd say it's one of the best JRPGs on the Saturn. For sure, Folks for sure. definitely play it. Uh, and it's not that long. Like I feel like it's it's doable. It's a sizable RPG. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Next up, we got, of course, a Lunar. game that needs no... We gotta talk about Lunar. <laughs> Lunar, you wanna talk about this Yeah, game? absolutely. Lunar, one of the 
Probably one of the most famous working designs games uh, on Sega CD, released in, I think it's 93, 94, I can't remember off the top of my head, but one of the, the best original games came to the Saturn and then to the PlayStation, but sadly we got the PlayStation version but not the Saturn version because, of course, RPGs weren't really that focused on and there's a lot of working designs issues that went on, but long story short... No uh, RPGs, right? <laughs> no RPGs. They were like, no RPGs. No. None. None. None don't Americans server. don't like RPGs, no. right? No. <laughs> Apparently, you guys don't like RPGs, right? No? Right. No RPGs? <laughs> no, but, uh, but anyways... This game was amazing by Mr. Uh, was with, uh, by Mr. Conan, right? Mr. Conan, yeah, that's Mr. right. Conan February of 2021. 2021. It's a great patch. There's two ways to play. You can do it with an MPEG card, or you can do the uh, regular, uh, regular non MPEG card version of it, which looks almost just as good, if not better. The cutscenes so. still look good without it. Yeah. So, yeah, Trekkies Unite did a killer job on that. Yeah. So yeah, definitely highly recommend playing this game if you really want the definitive version of Lunar Silver Star. There's a feeling of retribution when you can play a Saturn game in English that you couldn't play before, but all the PlayStation nerds got it way back in the day. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's a very good feeling. It's that chip it's on our shoulder that we that. can finally brush off. Yep. Yep. Next up, of course, we Classic. have Castlevania. Castlevania. Night. Yep. Now, this game arguably has like some, there are some reasons to play this on the Saturn, right? Pat? There are, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah, there's definitely, there's a lot of exclusive areas, exclusive items. We actually, uh, Peter Malik, uh, one of our writers for the magazine, and our writer on our website, uh, and a great, great guy, wrote an article all about uh, Castlevania Simply the Night on Saturn, the case for why you should play it. I mean, yeah, there's still some texture issues here and there, but there's a lot of great ways to play it now. There's not one, not two, but three different patches to play it. So it's like, you yeah. want uh, translations with the MPEG card? You can. You just want the MPEG card? You can. You want just the fan translation in general and some changes like removing the map? I know you were a fan of it. Yeah, right? so what Knight of Dragon did for this patch, he you know, converted all the text to English. Uh, he did not include the English dub, so if you're a fan of Die Monster, you don't belong in this world, it's not here. But um, for some people, that's a good thing. The big perk here is that uh, Knight of Dragons English patch also uh, had a gameplay improvement. On the Saturn version, the regular vanilla Saturn Symphony of the Night, the map takes forever to load. It takes like, like a full 10 or 15 seconds. Uh, Knight was able to make it load instantly, so you get it in English and they you can actually that look at the map yeah, yeah. Once, And you so. can play as Maria, right? Yeah, exactly. you can play as Maria in the Saturn version. Yeah. Awesome. I keep being switched up who was who, though. This Here's didn't necessarily that... need a patch, but yeah. it has it, and we can now understand the plot of this cutesy shmup. They kept the font and everything. Um, Absolutely. Nanash One uh, in March 2021 brought us the, you know, the uh, translation of Cotton 2, so now we can understand the the tea party and the candy. And yeah, exactly. The, the excessive um, willow candy. Still, you know. it's infinitely playable regardless of your language, but it's more enjoyable because of the context. You know, you get to enjoy the story and. Um, definitely a game that folks should experience on the Saturn. Excellent. Game. The plot line's very parallel to Kirby takes on the world to get strawberry shortcake. It's that kind of a plot line. Yeah. So you have to get ready for Rainbow Pot and come out soon too. So that's kind of cool. Again, with the Stardust Crusaders, Aisha and Paul Met, you're going to hear those names a lot here because they've just been incredibly prolific over the last few years, just pumping out JRPGs. Uh, it, Valhallian is kind of like a strategy RPG in the vein of, what would you, like Fire Emblem, kind of? Yeah, honestly, there, a lot of them are Fire Emblem masks that are on our list today. Like, I don't know, there's a lot of Fire Emblem love. I guess people like Fire Emblem, but I can't blame them. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very Fire Emblem-esque, like turn-based strategy, a lot of that story RPG sort of thing. It's a, lot, it's a really fun game. I really enjoyed what I played of it. I really need to go play more of these games. But and you do get some creamy 3D graphics. You do right? get creamy Say 3D the line, graphics. Panda. Yeah. Say the line. Say it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you you get the battles played out in 3D, kind of the same way with like Bach and Rotor, some of those other. Oh, even uh, Shining Force 3, those games, you know, where you're doing everything on the map and then the battles play out in 3D. It's, That's it's the whole Final Fantasy sprite to giant sword dude, and it's like okay. This is the impressive part, though. The same month, May 2021, the same team brought us another strategy RPG, Vandal Hearts, which was a Konami, is an excellent Konami game that a lot of folks should play, right, Nick? Yeah, it's Definitely. another great marriage of how the Saturn can mix 2D and 3D really well, especially for how the fifth gen look goes, right? Um, and really crazy blood effects in the sprite work, for sure. Um, this one's a very fun RPG. If you're, like, not extremely, extremely into RPGs, but you want, like, an easy one to get into, uh, this one's Vandal Hearts is a good one to get into, for sure. Absolutely. And it looks really good on Saturn, for sure. And that was the same team, Stardust Crusaders and Paul Met, uh, in May of 2021. Uh, July of 2021, we Ooh, saw nice. Soccer Awards from Noah Steam. Uh, this is a team of folks who brought us this amazingly popular game on the Saturn in Japan, believe it or not. It was a, 
a game that they marketed the console based on, you know? But here, it's been a bit of a, bit of a you know, unsung. We got like one title on the Sega list. didn't yeah. think that one, they yeah, could one, market one anime game. girls and robots in the US for whatever reason. They just don't think we like that, no. I guess. Yeah. So, mm. uh, I don't know. Yeah. But we're better now. We know that that's cool. <laughs> The great thing We've about Cyber Wars is you get so many different play genres. Like there's, a, it's a visual it, novel. Yeah, visual novel, uh, RTS, and a uh, dating sim in all yep. one. So if you're into Fire Emblem Awakening and all the other Fire Emblems, this would be right up your alley because it's the same. Uh, what is with all these games being like turn-based strategy like Fire Emblem? Right. <laughs> all, like all these ones we're mentioning, I, I guess people really like Fire Emblem in the Saturn community. So I guess shouts out to... Uh, Shouts out Crom and Lucina. I mean, I guess. I guess it's just these are the kind of games that they didn't think we were interested they in. They didn't think West. we wanted so they just anime didn't girls and giant robots. No. no. So it was a big system seller in Japan, and it's really great that we can now play it in English on Saturn. And we, yeah, we also uh, Sakura herself at our booth uh, if you want to yeah. meet her. <laughs> we got Sakura and Dinjuki if you want to go say hello. <laughs> well, this next game is a complete change of genre. This is Bulk safe. Slash. Now, Bulk Slash, I think, is one of the greatest examples of Saturn's graphical abilities. The way yeah. that it marries 2D and 3D together, because you've got like the, the main character is kind of like a sprite, but he's moving around as this 3D uh, field. The Bulk Slash team in uh, December of 2021 brought us this complete English localization with fan actors. And yeah. I'm, I literally mean like they call, they got a hold of fans in the community and were just like, do you want to voice act for this game? And maybe they had one or two things to their credit, but you know, they were literally... They held auditions. They narrowed down the people who auditioned and there were some folks that didn't make the cut. So they you know, picked the best voice actors and actresses and dubbed the game. So all the navigators that tell you where to go and uh, tell you what direction the target is. Uh, you can hear it all. So it's completely in English, right, yeah. okay. and I would argue that it's better. They did a better production than some of the games that were released back in the day, right? Pat needs me to hit him with a fun fact. Oh yeah. Uh, all three of us do do voices in the game. I think this you do narrations at the end, at right? At the very end, yeah. I have the like three end. lines in the credits or something. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and then we say, watch out, uh, watch out. during, uh, during <laughs> yeah. I think, Rupia Rude's uh, actually credit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if you guys like, like us and want to hear more of us, definitely play this game. And, of course, you hear it's dubbed as well, which I think is really cool. And that's the best thing about that. The team did a bang-up job. This is a massive undertaking for a translation patch. Uh, and it was, you know, the first of its kind in the Saturn scene. We hadn't seen one like this before. It was very impressive work from the team of... I don't know, 20 people who are involved in this? Absolutely. Yeah. What's next, Dave? So the next game, I'm actually going to call out somebody in this room right here. A Murder of Crows over here with the blue hair. It should be around here. He brought yeah. us, he, he and Shadow Mask brought us Death Mask on the Saturn. Now, Death Mask was originally a, a PC game called Angel Devoid. This is a cyberpunk point and click kind of adventure type game. Um, it's amazing. They were able to rip all of the original English audio and, and data from the original PC game and hack it into the Saturn game. Because the, the, for some reason, the Japanese did this thing where they, they localized a lot of US PC games in Japan, but then we would never get them on the US Saturn. Like it was filmed in English, in America or wherever, and then it only came out in Japan in Japanese, and then we didn't get it. So right, weird. I, I don't know whether it came out in English on the PC, but I don't know, or, but fans yeah. are rectifying that now. Yep, and uh, it's it's actually a lot of fun. Um, it's it's one of those games that you just have to experience. The, there's a lot of silly dialogue, but there's a, you know if it's definitely got that cyberpunk aesthetic, and it is. It borrows a lot from like Blade Runner and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, we died so many you times to that, la that lady. Like, oh my gosh, we when we started playing that and streaming it, we just kept dying over and over again. It was the so gameplay in Death Mask is kind of tough to figure out, but once you figure it out, you're in for a good time. Definitely an of the era experience for sure. Here's another game that really started with A Murder of Crows back in like the early aughts. Uh, mm -hmm. He translated all of the wrestlers' names for Fire Pro uh, Wrestling, Fire Pro S, Six Men Scramble. He had translated all of the wrestlers' names so that it, you could understand the context of who the wrestlers were. And then, of course, Malenko uh, kind of helped finish up the translation in January of 22, just last year, and brought us this game in its entirety to play in English. So if you're a wrestling fan, this is one of the best wrestling games out there, right, Kay? I mean... Yeah, and, and what, I didn't do the, like, I did the translation into, like, putting it into the game as it was, but it, the original translation guide was from a uh, guy who was in the Fire Pro scene in the 90s called The Great Kagura. Oh, okay, nice. right. Nice. So, I mean, this goes way okay. back. It does, actually, it, it really does go way back to the early days of translating on the Saturn. They were, like, doing Fire Pro, like, uh, Super Fire Pro Wrestling on the Super Nintendo, so they right. were in this huge scene. 
in like 95. But seriously, like if wrestling on Saturn, easily one of the best, or if not the best. It's a six player game. You can get six sweaty people and have them all play at the same time. Absolutely. We can get that going too. We got some multi taps. We'll, yep, yep. Uh, we'll get some sweaty wrestling going on at our yep. booth. <laughs> Swing by. So next, we, next up we got the Stardust Crusaders again and Ice Shaw who brought us what was a kind of a Super Nintendo game, a Ogre Battle, the March of the Black Queen. They did get a version in Japan on the Saturn. Now we got it on the, in the US with, uh, of course, uh, English dialogue and menus and everything like that, so you can completely play. Uh, is it, you guys want to say anything about this one? Um, I really liked Ogre Battle a lot. Um, I played it in the Super Nintendo as a kid, and I had no idea what I was doing, and I was like, this game sucks. <laughs> this and, gameplay like, is me not knowing it. what I'm doing, you know. Exactly, but once you get to know it, it feels, it's really good. I really enjoy the game a lot. It's, I guess it's kind of like Dragon Force in a way. It's kind of a hard, it's almost like that. I don't know, maybe it might... Be yeah. confused. It's Ogre Battle. It's a lot of fun. It's Ogre Battle. It is very. It's named off of the best. Is. It's named off of the Queen song. So if you like Queen, definitely recommend playing this game. What do we got uh, next, Dave? Oh, next we got Malenko, who brought us in October of 22, Drift King. So this was a. This is a Genki racing game. This is the precursor to the Tokyo Extreme Racing series on the Dreamcast and later the PlayStation 2 and everything. Great game. I highly recommend it. It was originally Drift King 97 in Japan, localized on the PlayStation as Tokyo Highway Battle. But now, of course, localized on the Saturn as well. Um, this is an excellent, like, you know, Tokyo Highway racer. You, you, you if find any part of you likes Initial D, you have no reason not to try Seriously. this out. It's, a be it's better than the actual Initial D game on the Saturn, yeah, in my opinion, exactly. at least. And you got the Drift King there giving you tips. No, that was or the, that's a mechanic. Drift oh, the King's that's the Bondo. <laughs> okay, Bondo is like the mechanic. Don't who... disrespect the Drift King, Dave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Okay. Uh, okay, so next up, moving right along. We've got Kitchen34, who gave us Phantasmagoria on the Saturn. So this, of course, was another PC game. They got it in Japan on the Saturn as like an eight-disc game, is that Yeah, right? eight discs. It's a whopper of a game. And again, it's a game where everything was filmed in English originally, and then they translated everything to Japanese, released it on Saturn in Japan, not in America, not in Europe. We don't need it. It's yeah. fine. I do not recommend burning all eight discs. Go get an <laughs> yeah, ODE. don't do that. Do get an, an ODE. ODE. Do yourself oh, yeah, a favor. Definitely. But yeah, fun horror game, definitely a 90s era horror game. They did censor some of the really gruesome scenes from the PC version on the Saturn port. So just something to keep in mind if that's something that would bother you. A yeah, book absolutely. Uh, next up, of course, is uh, we've got, again, the Stardust Crusaders. Aisha and Paul Met brought us Tactics Ogre. Let us cling together. Now, this is, uh, this is definitely more of like a Saturn PlayStation era game uh, versus like Ogre Battle. But uh, so this one has like that Ivelisse kind of look to it, like the graphics are amazing, the sprite work, uh, isometric, uh, turn-based strategy. Yeah, another, yeah. another Fire yeah. emblem game. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, the again. Sprites, the sprite work in this one, it looks really, really nice, and it's great to be able to play it in English and be able to understand the plot and know what moves I'm using and such, so yeah, this is a great one to try out for sure. And then we had uh, the Bulk Slash team, or now I guess the Stellar Assault SS team. Same folks that brought us that complete English localization for Bulk Slash have completely localized in English with voice actors Stellar Assault SS for the sound. And this is a Star Fox type shooter. Yep. It's a very, very fun three dimensional spaceship fighting game. Uh, I shouldn't call it a fighting game, it's not Street Fighter, but yeah, you blow up spaceships. It's really fun. Um, and much like Bulk Slash, there are uh, you know Japanese voice clips of the side characters telling you where to go, what your mission what your mission is. And now in this patch, that's been dubbed into English with some of the same uh, voice talent from the bulk slash translation that we showed you a few minutes ago. And another thing they did with this patch is not only did they translate everything, but they added mission stick support, uh, which is a ton of fun in a spaceship game, obviously. So We actually forgot uh, to mention that they added it for bulk slash too. They had the twin stick support. They added for that. twin stick support to bulk slash too. So yeah. um, when it going above the the the, uh, the call of just translating it, they added in support for other peripherals that weren't on it before. So very well done. And this one's complete, it's out, you can play it, you can download the patch and put it on. It's like the, what fans were capable of with this, it, it just blows me away because the production value is so high, it sets such a high bar yeah. for all translations and localizations across all consoles. Like I, I haven't seen a localization project like this. On other consoles now. and stuff yeah. like that, and not this many either, especially in recent years. The Saturn translation team is seriously blown up. So. Next, um, we have a very recent one that we just got um, in July, that over the summer. Uh, Pliskin brought us Baroque, the, wow. the gritty, dark, <laughs> uh, kind of like dungeon crawling, band. angels and demons kind of RPG 
collector. I, it's just, it's a crazy game. You know, it did get ported to the Wii and the PlayStation 2, but they completely revamped the graphics and kind of made it light. It's just and not the same. It's not the same no. game. It doesn't have that really gritty, dark Japanese kind of uh, aesthetic that they wanted it back then. So th this is the game that folks should play, you know? Really uh, fun dungeon crawler, and it definitely has a vibe to it for sure. Yeah, and I did, did want to get shout out to also. We had uh, Emerald Nova did a, a, a bridge version of it that get, did rough translations to be able to, to do the game yeah. uh, initially. So I want to give a big shout out to him for giving us a playable version right. before this one was actually and released about a year later. Version came out. And yeah. for those who don't know Emerald Nova, he is the one who holds the contest every year that inspires. Uh, fans to do these games. Yep, like, every he holds year. a contest with a cash prize to get to kind of incentivize folks to create original homebrew and do patches. So like this year, it's going to be insane. Uh, judging is in what end of December and I think it's end of February. Oh, end like of February. I think the okay. deadline is beginning of January, and then us judges have like through the end of February to judge them all. There's going to be a lot of homebrew submissions this year in that contest. Uh, just in September of 23, we got uh, Dungeon Master Nexus. Shouts to Paul in the audience there, huge Dungeon Master Nexus fan. And uh, yeah, for folks <laughs> who have been waiting for kind of like a Kingsfield game in English on the Saturn, it's in that vein. You're, you're uh, going through dungeons, you got the, say it, creamy what? Creamy 3D graphics. Yeah. <laughs> it does have it. Yeah, it definitely has creamy 3D graphics yeah. for sure. Yeah, so if you like Soulsborne's games and just dying constantly and throwing your control against the wall, I don't actually don't know if that's that type of game, but... If you I love nothing like more it. than to start the game over constantly and uh, get good at it, uh, this is the one for you for sure. Good dungeon crawler. Kind of like, like I think Odyssey. is the terminology these kids do these days use, right? Get good or something? Get I good, know. Yeah. roguelike. Good scrub. I mean, yeah, this is an old school, <laughs> it's pretty hardcore. Uh, but there are like difficulty settings in it, I think too. Okay, so we can make it. We put it on baby mode you then. Can okay. Put it on monkey mode. Yeah, that'd, that'd be the one for me for sure. I, I'm definitely gonna play. Baby Most mode. recently, uh, we got JB Harold Blue Chicago Blues, which is, uh, it is kind of like this gritty Chicago uh, crime solving. You know, it's it's the precursor to the Hotel Dusk games. Actually, River Hill Soft. They created the, this series of games in the JB Herald universe. This game actually got an English port on the Laser Active, but unless you have like 500 bucks to throw. Away. 500? You mean that? You mean like 4,000 dollars, dude? Yeah. Laser Active alone's like in the grand. Oh, I was just talking for the game. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's even more. I think that's in the thousands too. Okay. So. All right. Yeah, well, you, Saturn's a little cheaper. It's yeah. weird saying the Saturn is cheaper than anything, but yeah. But yeah, if you want to play a game with uh, with Alan from Tome Improvement, being a detective, I think uh, I think this is the game for you. Oh, and I forgot to mention, uh, Dungeon Master was Christoph F, and yes. uh, this was Arjack. A Ar uh, fan in the community named Arjack uh, gave us this patch. Um, real quick, we're just going to show you some stuff that's up and coming. Yeah, this this is, is, these are all in progress right now. Yet Bomberman to be released, being worked but on by Malenko. very much being worked on. Probably will be done shortly. I'm, yeah, I'm, he's pretty close Since this contest deadline up. is soon, you know, we're going to see Bomberman fight. It was always playable, of course, but now you get it in English and... You can actually try the translation patch, uh, the beta translation on our Patreon if you back us at the $3 level. So I didn't want to plug that, but just in case you guys want to try it out. Anybody familiar with Sam, the Southern Sega gentleman? He is uh, hes a YouTuber. He's also working on Gun Griffin, too, bringing us this, uh, you know, bringing us The this sequel amazing... we never got in, in, the, in the States or in Europe, so. Yeah. He, did it, he did it right. And, uh, I mean, he, he raves and goes on and on about the context of the story and stuff like that that's mm -hmm. lost on you if you just play You know, yes, it's playable, but you don't, a lot is lost on you because uh, there's, like, quite a story here. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, definitely check his video on Gun Griffin, too, if you guys have a chance. It's really great. We, get, we expect Soccer Wars 2 right around the corner here. We're really excited for it. They released a kind of a sneak peek demo last year. They did, yeah. yeah. It's much of the same team that translated the first Soccer Wars uh, a couple of years ago. So they're coming back. They're doing number two, baby. The Squeakles. I'm super here. excited, man. I'm going to get my Weeb on. Heck yeah. Hell yeah. And uh, yes, that's uh, Noah Steam and Trekkies Unite 118. Yep. Uh, Shadows of the Tusk. Here's an amazing game that was really locked to Japan because it was Netlink. You had to have the X band actually in Japan. Well, they brought the game back in English, and they also brought the Netlink because now X band is playable online over a tunnel. You get a Dream Pie, you get a Netlink cart, you plop it in. You're playing other people this online. This is it right there. This is Pat and I. We played this game. It's amazing. It's so yeah, we're much playing fun. Playing it right there live. Yeah, you can play. Get the Netlink. Play some Netlink stuff going kinda on. Kind of like a grid-based chess. Uh, it's very cerebral. Uh, you could get. I mean. 
you could start out not knowing what you're doing and get really good, you know, uh, over a couple days. But I mean, it's it's a lot of fun, and there's so much complexity to this game. Exactly, so, it's a lot of fun. There's that actually a whole all bunch of Netlink playing. playable games now that, that folks should check out. That's another that's another that's another presentation. <laughs> And then, of course, Vakken Rotor. This one's pretty close to being done. Uh, don't be sad if you're playing this game. It's got a very dark plot, so make sure you're yeah. happy before you get into it. The world sucks. <laughs> yes. Your mom's dead. Your dad's dead. Everyone you know is like dead. Like everybody's game dead. Over, the world's you know. gone to heck. It's yeah. just, yeah. It's, yeah, so it's, 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 it's got not a very dark one. plot line, but very fun game, yes. It's very like Final good. Fantasy VII storyline on crack. Cyberpunk RPG, would you say? Like, it's very yeah, very yeah, cyberpunk S. Steampunkish, I guess. I and they have know. steam in their swords. Sort of you gotta like do the yeah. It's kind of the a mishmash thing. Yeah. between steampunk and cyberpunk. It's and then, really of course, good. The, the, the fighting sequences had creamy 3D graphics like you're about to see here. Yeah. Uh, Knight of Dragon has got uh, much of this wrapped up. He's finishing up putting the final touches on the patch now. Um, and a lot of the text that he's using came from a GameFAQs translation from like eons ago. I think that might have been from late 90s, early aughts. Um, so a lot of the translation work from that is now being patched into the game. So you don't have to, you know, print out a 200-page GameFAQs translation and thumb through it when you're trying to figure out what menu you're I mean, on. you can if you want. We're not going to judge you or anything. It, it's fun. It's a good hobby, but yeah. You don't have to do that anymore. You're well, free. Well, ne next up, we're going to talk about the folks who are creating original games on yeah. Saturn. Yeah, so Absolutely. from scratch, making their own games, and a lot of it's like 3D stuff on Saturn from and scratch. If any of you guys have heard, that any it's not exactly an easy or trivial matter to program no. for the Saturn, right? Um, but I want to shout out Johannes Fetz, who created Joe Engine. This is a modern tool that any one of you in this audience can download for free and start messing around with code coding for Saturn. If you have a little bit of C knowledge, that helps, but I mean, I've seen folks go from zero to creating games with Joe Engine. You don't need to buy an old development kit. You don't have to spend any money. In fact, you can just download the tools, start messing around with them. Um, uh, we have some homebrew developers in this room with us that we're going to talk about. Right but, now. Yeah, so we'll get to them. We're a prominent member of the community and one that has inspired a lot of others after him is XL2. Uh, XL2 started out in 2019 with the Z Treme. You got, it Sonic was like Z Stream a, or whatever. Try, try to, it was an engine called Z Stream or Sonic Z Stream in an attempt to kind of bring back what we saw at E396 of uh, Sonic Xtreme. But uh, based on that engine, we got Hellslave. You guys want to talk about Hellslave? Yeah, so this is just crazy that it exists. There's a lot of good uh, reflections going on in the graphics. The draw distance is incredible. It has level of detail draw distance. Um, we have never really seen Game a first-person shooter like this on the Saturn. Uh, what's especially crazy is that it's capable of going up to not only uh, two-way split-screen, but four-way split-screen. None of the commercially released Saturn first-person shooters like Duke Nukem and Quake could do any kind of split-screen at all. So the fact that he got four running is really impressive, on top of the graphics just being top-notch and the controls really And Netlinx is actually, Netli Netlink is actually in the cards, too, for that that he's looking into as well. And like he's play. thinking about getting that going. So. And you can definitely tell that it's Lobotomy Soft-inspired. He's very much uh, admittedly Lobotomy Soft-inspired. He then brought us Unreal, basically, on yeah, the Saturn. He ported Unreal, the first two levels of the game Unreal, to the Sega Saturn. Yeah, something that I don't think anyone even considered being a possibility. Uh, yeah, he made it happen. So using the engine that he made Hellslave out of, he ported Unreal. So it's a lot of fun, too. Of Get a look at those uh, the lighting effects on the bullets coming out of that gun. And then in a little bit in the footage, you'll see uh, the main character go outside. Uh, where uh, the second video display processor on the Saturn's really being put to use with the sky graphics extending into the horizon. There are multiple layers of sky just stretching in that. PlayStation can't do that. PS1 no. can't do that. Uh, Saturn can. So it, it, it too, looks really baby. good. <laughs> Saturn does what, what uh, PlayStation don't. <laughs> Then, then we had somebody kind of just come out of the woodwork. He's sitting right here. Yeah, right there, there he is, right there. Seven Shades, Seven baby. Shades. Cube Cat creators in the audience. Round of applause for Seven Shades. He gave us this cute, adorable little kitty platformer where you, you're bouncing around on these islands and you're pushing this little ball of yarn to the, to the end goal. This game continues to see improvements. It continues to see enhancements with the graphics, the sound, the, the gameplay, gameplay design. Mechanics. He's, yeah, amazing he's gone gameplay. back and just revamped the graphic, the gameplay design. Uh, getting feedback from the community, what works, what doesn't work, what makes it a better play experience. And we had the RetroBit guys test it last year with their their new 3D control On the pad. Pluto as well. Uh, yeah. and, and even they were blown away. They were like, wait, a, a fan made this? They're like, what the hell? You know. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, it's insane what the fans are capable of. And we, we owe a great debt to Seven Shades for bringing us another fun yeah. game on the Saturn. It's just... Uh, 
the ball's just getting rolling. I yeah, I the yarn ball is getting the rolling. Yarn, Dave. The ball of yarn. I saw this one. It was the first game I was able, able to play properly on the Mister. So thank you very much for making that so good. Damage X, of course, is another individual in the community who's doing giving us. He, he's making video games. Yes, uh, this one is. Uh, it's a small game. Uh, think like a mini game you'd unlock in WarioWare. That's yeah, it was like fly a game versus jam fly. Game. <laughs> yeah. uh, and he also made Shmup Salad, where you fight food with a variety of eating utensils that you can level up. Uh, <laughs> it's fun. It's you, a lot. It's really fun. Trust me. Yeah. It is a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, we also got uh, we got Emerald Nova. We mentioned him before. This is kind of like the patriarch in a way of like the. He's kind of the godfather of the homebrew scene right yeah. now. Yeah. He's really. Uh, um, I mean, enabled a lot of the growth that's happened in recent years with his homebrew contest. This is just some some demos that Emerald Nova has made. Proof of concept yeah. of what the Saturn 3D is capable. You know, he he kind of put his money where his mouth is. You know, every year he puts up a cash prize and yep. he really encourages it. He runs a website that has a repository for all this stuff. Sega Extreme is the website. Yes. Uh, it's, it, no E at the beginning of Extreme, just Sega, the letter X, Stream. Oh, this is uh, Galaxmas? Yeah. Or, yeah, he made this in 24 hours as a joke. Uh, yeah, you're fighting Christmas-themed enemies in this game. It's so. actually really tough, actually. But so yeah, yeah, he did difficult. this in, what, 24 hours? So yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's a lot of fun. And we, yeah, definitely kudos and shouts to Emerald Nova. Um, we've got, of course, Sar uh, Irville Soft with Sickle. And also Sardist, he did. He did Sardist, and he also did the Chip 8 emulator, which you'll see in a bit. Uh, Herbal Soft's made a lot of, like, mainly 2D heavy games on Saturn. This is, like, a cute little top-down shooter that he made a few years ago. And the Chip 8 emulator, uh, it's a Chip 8 emulator. There's a bunch of games that he loaded up on it. And yeah, you can play Chip 8 games on your Saturn if that's something you've ever wanted to do. Um, he made it so that you can put your own Chip 8 games on it if you uh, have a, if you use the Windows software that comes with the patch, or with the game rather, and then just make your own ROM with your own Chip 8 games that you've downloaded and throw them on. And so that's kind of neat. Sardist is like a Mario Paint kind of thing. Yeah, right? Sardist yeah. is just like a paint game. That's cool. pretty much all it is. So yeah. yeah. Nets artist. Yep. Next we have Fran Matsuzaka. Last year brought us, um, what is it? Uh, B Bridget Bishop. Bridget Bishop. Yeah. Bridget Bridget. Yeah. One of, really fun uh, Resident Evil like game. Like it's uh, basically a explorer game. You solve puzzles. You turn your frog into a toilet. You turn them into uh, different things, plants and stuff. Like it's a lot of fun. The, the game is really cutesy. Uh, I think my favorite feature of it is that it's both in English and English, French, and Spanish. So you get all the games to the language, and you can watch me stream it and. Not understand it, but I believe it's it, a lot of fun. It was inspired by Jack in the Dark, which was like an yeah. early demo for uh, Jack is Back or you know Alone yeah. in the Dark too. Um, so yeah, but it's great, great little uh, game that folks should touch. You can lose out. an afternoon playing the whole thing. It's a yeah. lot of fun. It's very so. cute. Mm -hmm. um, Zygo by uh, Jay Beretta. Yeah, this is Jay Beretta's first game he's ever made. He's learning C, and in learning C, he's trying to make Saturn games. So he made this uh, this neat little 2D platformer. You get power-ups later on in the game that you can use in early levels to get things you couldn't get otherwise, turning into animals and climbing up walls and such. Um, and then at some point, Z um, Jay Beretta decided to make Zydo Zygo a 3D game, which you'll see here in a, a few seconds. Um, you can tell that the 3D engine that Jay Beretta's working on is still in progress, but yeah, he's transforming his creation into a, a, a realized 3D experience, which is kind of neat. So, mm -hmm. And he's making it all from scratch while learning how to program in C. A nice effort here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Next up we've got Ponut. Ponut has been also a member of the, the Saturn coding community for uh, quite a few He's been around years. for a bit, yeah. And, uh, it started with the Pony Game. It was called Pony Game. I think it was just yeah, called Pony, Pony Game. game. Yeah. The, the, the focus of this was he really on the physics engine. Because there's a lot of like moon jumping, moon bouncing, and like sliding going on. So yeah. it really, once you pick it up and play it, and you can play it at our booth if you want to uh, check it out, it's really just about that feeling that you get uh, platforming. And, and uh, I don't know, the pony character is kind of secondary. It's, once you <laughs> yeah. master the physics of this game, it kind of feels like you're playing Tony Hawk in a sense. It's Pony with, Hawk, really. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's there, you there you go. There you go. But yeah, you got this big giant playground to kind of just run around, jump through hoops, and test out the physics engine. It's pretty cool. What do we got next? Next up, we got uh, Gabriel Sansagolo, who he, he he's making a lot of visual novels. He's made about three for the Saturn right now. And in this game we're seeing here, Red Moon, is actually the first homebrew game to get a physical release. That's um, right. It so you published. can buy like a copy of the game off of the website that he's selling it on right now. So mm -hmm. a published visual novel for Saturn. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Just I know the beginning. A, 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 a console doesn't have any really any in the U.S., so it's nice to get some visual novels where we can't really, we couldn't get any in the past. <laughs> right, right, absolutely. Next, we've got uh, 
Slinga, who brought us, he, he, Slinga's brought us so many great like 12 player multiplayer games. And like, when we say 12 player, just like the wrestling game, we're talking 12 sweaty people crowding around the same TV screen, the same Saturn, all with their own controller. Yeah. So this is a Asteroids clone where you can have 12 people playing their own ship in the asteroid screen. And he did the same thing with Balloonatics. This is totally not Balloon Fight, my goodness. <laughs> no, Nintendo, um, don't look at the screen. But much like Astro uh, Disasteroids, you can have 12 people in a 12-player Balloon Fight arena, which is really neat. I mean, a Balloonatics arena. And he um, gave us Flicky's Flock, which was Flicky's like a Flock, birds. a little Flappy Bird clone. 12-player yeah. Flappy mm, Bird yeah. clone. And we'll, um, we'll try to get these all going so that way you guys can be able to play it and uh, try the 12-player for yourself. We want to try that out at some point today, One of the yeah. greatest things they gave us, though, was the save game copier. This Don't is not think? impressive looking, but it is a very useful utility. I mean, so. how many folks have lost their Saturn saves due to a bad battery, right? Or a cart, maybe, that got corrupted or something. With this, you can literally back up all, and dump all of your saves onto your PC, mm -hmm. onto an SD card. Uh, there are multiple ways that you can use Save Game Copier. It's been an uh, invaluable tool for the Saturn community. Um, we also have Super Ray, who brought us uh, Sky Blaster. Sky Blaster. Blaster. Yeah. This game's great. Um, they've been making progress on it every year in the homebrew in every homebrew contest year. Um, the music on it's great. Random did the soundtrack for uh, for Sky Blaster, and all the tracks are absolute slappers. Uh, game's really fun. It's compatible with the 3D control pad, so it's got analog control in a shmup. Um, yeah, I. I know they're still working on builds of it now. Mm -hmm. We've also got Team uh, Starlane who brought us Blue Skies, which is kind of a pilot wings clone. Yep. Um, it's very. Uh, it's a lot of fun to control the plane. It Quite marries relaxing, 2D, really. 2D sprite work and 3D graphics. Yeah. Really yep. well. And uh, it's a, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's still a work in progress. I think they're 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 working on building it out, fleshing it out with more levels. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun, and um, they're a talented team. Definitely one to look at for sure. Um, you guys can test it out at our booth, and of course, VBT has been a long community, long time community member. Ported Wolfenstein to the Saturn. Not just uh, Wolfenstein, though, right? Not just Wolfenstein. There's like 12 Wolfenstein mods that he included. So if you wanted to play Burgerstein, where you fight burgers <laughs> instead of Nazis, you or can Christmas, play that version Santa. too. Or Christmas, Santa. Yeah. Yep. Some are NSFW. Don't stream. Oh yeah, there are definitely some NSFW. Ones. Actually, I don't, actually, we'll reach out to him. Maybe we can get him to get. We should get him to do that. Day. We should get him to put that one in. Yeah. We'll work on that. Thank you. I think you show Burgerstein here, right? Yeah, Burgersteins. Yeah, there, there you go. There you go, oh. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> so that's a lot of fun and uh, easy, easy to download and play on your Saturn now. And oh, we also have Voxel from the UK uh, brought us the the definitive, I guess, Sonic Extreme Vision with the with the fisheye lens. Was able to rip out all the assets out of a dump that was found of that original PC build that was shown at uh, at E three ninety six. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. got all the assets and was able to port them to the Saturn. And so this, you can actually play what we saw at E three ninety six. Now, whether it's uh, I don't know a good game or not, you know, it, it's, it's that's fun. up for debate. His goal was to you know make this accurate to what we saw at E three, and it definitely accomplishes Absolutely. that motion sickness and all. Yep. Yeah, the weasel but the weasel fight is actually a lot of fun. It is it a lot. Is. Of fun. Yeah, this was, the weasel the fight weasel. was very well done. Yep. It's so, difficult, though, so uh, get good at that one. But, I mean, it's precisely what we saw at the it is, at E3. Yeah. So he you did know, a very good job, like, making it look and play exactly like how we thought it would by seeing, by seeing what, what we saw at E3. So, yep. yeah, very well done. And then I just want to shout out Knight of Dragon, who uh, we mentioned for several of the translation patches. He's also made it really easy for folks to... Uh, it's, patching Saturn games used to be a convoluted process. Now it's like one single tool, drag and drop, patch your game. You know, Not to mention you buy you a game on the vendor the floor out there, you pop it into your CD-ROM drive, you download the patch from... We have it, all the patches, all of the stuff, homebrew and patches, linked on our website, segasatanshiro.com. Uh, you can download it and enjoy any of these patches. Relatively easy because of this tool, so shouts to Knight of Dragon for that. And then just really quickly, I want to, uh, we want to talk about ways that you guys can enjoy these patches. We'll make this quick. So you, you are going to have to boot them some way. So you can either use like a soft mod cart, right? Yeah. Uh, pseudo Saturn cart. Get from eBay, on flash, uh, flash an action replay. Yeah, it's burning, burning CDRs. That's the cheapest solution for sure. That's the cheapest. Then you got the mod chips. Phantom mod chips are relatively cheap, and they're very easy to install with just a ribbon cable. You know, So yep. if you want to go that route, you can do that and still play the CDRs. Or... 
Um, we've got a just a ton of options. There's a for lot of ODE options for emulator. Saturn. So like if you go, uh, Sega Steve, our, our friend, you know, he's selling like laser burnt out, you know, Saturns for like 20 bucks, no laser, right? So just stick an ODE in there. You got a $20 Saturn with an ODE. Uh, somebody in actually it. bought like all those, so <laughs> right. Literally just when I get left. So. But serious for folks who say Saturn's an expensive console. You can get an old dead Saturn, you know, with the lasers burnt out, put an ODE in it, and you just resurrected it, and yep. you could have like the entire library playable. So you got Fenrir, you got Mode, and then you've got Phoebe or Rhea. It uh, works like an EverDrive. You put all the games in an SD card, pop it in, and you're good. Just replaces yeah. your, your CD ROM drive. Um, and then, of course, if you want to spend the big money, there is a flash cart, basically. It's called uh, the Satiator. It's a removable optical drive emulator that goes into the VCD card slot on the back of the Saturn. No mods, just plug it in have the SD card with the entire library on it's there. It's the easiest solution and, for uh, sure. It is, a, it is pricey, I think it's yeah. over $200, but I mean, for, for conventions like this, that's what we use. Yeah, right? we have it, know, we, can have, we actually have it at the booth if you guys want to take a look at it. Yep, we're using it on the Pluto prototype uh, that Adam Korolik is uh, demoing at our booth. So if you guys want to come check out the Pluto as well, awesome little prototype, well, not little, it's, it's pretty big. But it, awesome it's, pretty, it's pretty lengthy. Yeah. So I think we're running up on time. I think yeah, yeah. We, we might have like maybe a few minutes for questions. I guess if anyone's got any they wanted to ask for here. Yeah. Oh, uh, what booth are you guys at? Uh, Four hundred and sixteen. Four hundred and sixteen in the in the vendor hall. Yeah. Uh huh. Anybody else? Up front. So not a question, but I can answer why a lot of games uh, release in English in Japan. Yeah. Basically, um, Japanese a lot of Japanese folks think that English is cool. Mm -hmm. And um, for example, most Resident Evil games and normal heroes all came out in in uh, English in, in Japan mm -hmm. with like Japanese sex and everything because they were just like we wanted to feel American, we wanted to feel cool. Right. So that's yeah. a lot of the reason why that is. Cool. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Over there. Uh, question for Pandemonium. I'm yeah. A big fan of your YouTube channel. Thank you. Uh, I just have a question, because you make these really elaborate, long, with great analysis videos, like fiscal year 1997, 6-1, amazing. Thank you. How long does it take you end-to-end -end when you actually begin your research to actually publishing your video on YouTube? It varies and uh, completely depends on what's going on in my real life, either with my job. Uh, my, my job takes up a lot of my time. If I were to have, like, unlimited free time, um, Let's take the virtual racing video, for example, from research to gameplay to getting interviews to editing and, and getting the video out there. If I had a limited free time, I could do a project like that in less than a month. Wow. Um, but what I've calculated is that per minute of video probably takes about an hour or more if you combine all the writing and research. So uh, if you were to do a really, really bad formula and wanted to figure out how many hours it took, it would be that the amount of minutes in a video. That, that, that can also vary. Some things might take longer than others. And he still, he works on stuff that like, he tells us about and it's like, oh, that was like two years ago, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and he does the podcast with us, right? You know, okay, so there's like, a lot of stuff. It's a lot. Thank you for the kind words, by the way. I really appreciate it. Over well, here? Um, would you, some of these games that came out on PlayStation and what, if you'd already played them on PlayStation, would you recommend replaying any of them on Saturn? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, definitely like Grandia oh, yeah. or Castlevania, Symphony of Night. There are reasons to play them and experience them on the Saturn. Uh, sometimes there are enhancements. Sometimes they're like, they were originally made for the Saturn and then they were ported to PlayStation. Of course, they both have their strengths in terms of graphics and what they do. And like, like I said, John Linneman, uh, on the on the cast recently said it, it, play Grandia on the Saturn. It's definitive, you know. Um, so yeah, definitely. Are there any other examples of games that you would police knots? Police knots, yes, definitely that. police knots. Uh, Castlevania. There's actually an uh, article that they wrote about why you should play it on our website. Yeah. Um, uh, Lunar. There's a lot of different examples, but there's a ton of them. Yeah. Like, we can talk to you about the booth. Uh, maybe not. Uh, maybe not all of them, but definitely like there. There are some reasons, you know. If you're and if you're a diehard Saturn fan, you're gonna want to do that. Exactly. Right. You know. Yeah. Uh, so a question over here. Yep. In the month or oh, yeah. you know. oh, him right there, the orange dude. Yeah. yeah. What do you see next? Yes, sir. Yeah. I was wondering, uh, is there any like Japanese-only Saturn games that you really wish would get like a fan translation that haven't been translated yet? Uh, easy, easy one. Zero, zero four uh, type R doozy. Uh, Dave Sim Racer. Uh, absolutely want that one. A hundred percent. If somebody does that in their audience, much love. I really want like no joke Omakase Sabers. I really oh. want a patch of Omakase Sabers. Yeah. Um, the Devil Summoner would be really cool to have a patch of. Oh, yeah, 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 that would be great. Yeah, and, and of course, uh, above all, Death Crimson. Someone's got a patch of Death Crimson. <laughs> oh. 
I would love to see the uh, fans of Stab and the island, the story of the island of Seven Winds, and then Kazu no Shima Monogatari. Yeah, it's a beautiful hand drawn. Like the sprites are huge, and they're all hand drawn. It's just a beautiful, gorgeous game uh, from start to finish, and it's just so the, the language barrier is so steep. But it's all voiced in Japanese. Just to have subtitles for that would be amazing. I know that it's being worked on in Spanish. I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping that somebody will take that passion for it and bring it over into English. But yeah, no, there there are many more. But uh, anyone, any other questions? I think there's one more right there, I think, from that dude. If you, Pandemonium, if you manage to get to the Panzer Dragoon Saga video, <laughs> how long, how, how oh, long we'll do you think of a video that'll be? Oh, eight five hours. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll probably be well in my 80s. I'll sound like an American David Attenborough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, the video, I don't know, 24 hours, maybe conservative estimate, right? Um, I honestly yeah, actually edited and talking it like halfway through it too, so. No joke, I envisioned that video being split into four parts for each disc, um, but I don't know how long it would wind up being. It would all depend on what I would get and how many developers have died by then. He's at second rally right now. That's the game. I think. So, why do so many uh, Saturn translators and homebrew artists hate Christmas? <laughs> Great question. Because they have to crunch to get their games ready for the competition. And they're probably working on that and spending with their family. Is there a question over here? Yeah. I think yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Alright, I just, I just have one for a fan of learning. So yeah. you're, like, you're working your way through, you know, the Saturn library. Uh, how do you decide, like, oh, how long this episode, like, should be? Uh, just as long as it needs to be. Um, in the early era of my videos, um, I really did not want them to be longer than 10 minutes. I have, of course, um, blasted that expectation out of the water. A little bit. Um, but yeah, it really just depends on, on the game. How much can I get for a certain game? How many interviews can I get? How much research can I get? Uh, do, do I need to have stuff translated? Uh, it really depends on how much research content I have. Uh, I write the script without any time goal in mind and just put everything I want on there until it's done and go from there. So yeah, that's You and then you, so over there. No, there is a fan page for the uh, PlayStation version of Bomberman Wars. Oh, Bomberman Wars, nice. Yeah, yeah the PlayStation version has a patch. Would there, is there has anything been thrown out about the, the patching the Saturn version? I think I talked to Malenko about that. He might have wanted to do it's that. It's possible. There's a, but, he, but again, he's working on a bunch of other projects, but I think it's a lot of people have been talking about that one as well. What, the, what, what folks do is they tend to like probe a game and see how, uh, like tentatively, how difficult it would be to do it. And if it's not a monumental work, because every game has its eccentricities about how it stores text. It's not just the amount stores. of text, but how you can actually yeah. get the text injected in. Like, Bakkenberger yeah. is a real uphill battle. Like, they, he said it's been a pain in the ass, you know, basically. So, uh, but, but essentially, having a PlayStation uh, translation already done does make it easier to get can steal that in, in data. And, and often that has happened, like with Grandia. I know that they took the translation from the PlayStation version over there. So I know the developer said they don't have any intention of doing any more right now, but how about that, uh, that Metal Gear tech demo that just dropped? Oh, yeah. it is real. Yeah, that is it's real. real. It's it's confirmation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we just got confirmation from XL2 that it is legit. Some guy just, uh, what was it, Frog Hole? <laughs> was just Frog kind of Hole, yeah. In secret, and it was just like, made a Metal Gear Solid, like, or, you know, the initial stage tech demo yeah. just to prove that it could be done, you know? Like, egg on my face, I flat out thought it was fake. Like, straight up. <laughs> I see a lot of those videos. Yeah. 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 He's using XL2's engine, then XL2 got in touch with him, he gave XL2 the, the ISO of the game, and he's like, oh yeah, it's totally real, it's really good. And I'm like, oh, okay! And he's like, oh, yeah. really? he's like, I'm really impressed at how much he got in there. You know, yeah, too. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have one. Uh, do we know, is the Princess Crown translation tomorrow? <laughs> And yes and no. Okay, I, uh, I I personally know the guy who's translating the text. He's got a lot going on in his real life, which that's an obstacle that anyone who does the, this hobby runs into. Uh, from what I understand, it's about seventy to eighty percent done. The issue is, you know, he can translate all the text. There are certain types of text and certain types of menus that they're having trouble getting coded into the game right now. So um, once the guy who's doing the text translations is able to, you know, A, have free time, and B, get in touch with the programmer who does, um, then uh, hopefully they can get it done. I know he's committed to wanting to get it done at some point. He's definitely still thinking about it and definitely still cares about it. But, I mean, his family and his real-life stuff takes priority. So that's just the way it is. Believe it or that's not, how it goes. that is the game that we get asked about the most. Yeah. yeah. Every, 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 like, every quiz, every, like, quiz, every quiz thing, every, like, 
questions like this. Right, we got we got to wrap things up. So uh, for the next panel, we'll get up here. So thank yeah. you guys for joining. Yeah, questions four sixty. We'll answer any questions there. Thank you so much for joining us. Zero to the shoot.